And we are back to discuss the uh, season finale to WandaVision. And uh, yeah, um, it's the first Marvel show we have on Disney+. Plus. And so far, I gotta say, the show itself was, you know, a weird rocky start. As it went on, catching steam, it got good. And this finale left me feeling a bit better than the finale for Watchmen, but not by much. Hmm. So I would, I would, I would rank, I would rank the Watchmen finale a little higher than this. I, I thought, hmm. I thought this was a, the finale here was a bit disappointing. There were some super high points of it. Okay, but yes, um, I'm not. I, there was some stuff that was absolutely excellent. The 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 stuff between Vision and and Wanda at the end uh, was fantastic. I mean, tearjerker stuff. It was, it was, uh, you know, that was some of, some of, I would say some of the best stuff that's been in any Marvel property. Right. Well, you know, mm -hmm. like was, was that, um, but there was some fairly unforgivable things that went on in this episode that, uh, that, that are a bit, a bit of a letdown. They, they created a little too many threads that they didn't, resolve or didn't have time to resolve uh, like what well i mean first of all i think fairly unforgivably uh Wu and darcy get no screen time in their minimal screen time in this last episode like that's just ridiculous um i thought the 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 sword uh coming in and 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 attacking didn't really have, there wasn't really much logic to it and it got wrapped up really quickly. Uh, so there weren't really any stakes on that. Um, I thought Monica Rambo's role in the entire series in retrospect was useless. They shouldn't have had her. Yes, thank you. They shouldn't, thank they you. shouldn't have had her. Um, Do you, so, so what you're saying is, you, and this is how I feel, you feel as though they probably filmed enough to make this finale a two-parter, mm. but they were like, nah, let's not, let's not hedge our bets. Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, had they had they done it two weeks, but it's just there was just weirdness. Like, how how is Darcy not in the final scene with Wu and and Monica? And they're just like, well, she took off. Like, what what are you talking about? Like, why would was there a dispute with the actress? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> was she? So that was ridiculous. And then of course, I think the Quicksilver thing. Um, we'll get, we'll yeah. get to that because there are a list of disappointments, but, uh, nine is an odd number to, uh, leave off on. Normally yeah. it's 10 or 13 or 12, but nine, it, it feels as though in the editing room, they realize maybe they were finished as they were filming this COVID hit and they're like, oh fuck, we got to like, you know, cut back on some of the filming yeah. we, we have to do, or maybe they couldn't reshoot certain scenes or maybe they wanted to reshoot certain scenes or add new scenes, but the actors and actresses weren't available possibly due to COVID. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and I understand that the fandom like builds up expectations about stuff. Oh God. And so yeah. certain things I don't, certain things I don't blame. Like, you know, there was, there was a lot of expectations that there was a yellow witch that, that the, the blonde woman uh, was was a was another witch, and there's all this sort of evidence in the background where like, she has the same name as a witch from from Salem. She she's coated yellow, while Wanda is coated maroon, and and Agatha is coated purple. You know, and, mm -hmm. and so every they, you know all this evidence was like, oh, they they need to introduce her as another witch, and then she just wasn't. She just you know, and I was like, fine, that's just fandom inventing stuff. While we're on the topic of yeah. the fandom inventing things, it it, it seems like. Uh... The fandom uh, invented a lot of cooler, more interesting things that could have gone down in this finale than what really happened. Well, I mean, with with Quicksilver, no, like they clearly cast the guy um, to create a lot of confusion buzz. and buzz and ruckus. And then your next movie is called Multiverse of Madness, and the next Spider-Man movie is involving multiverses. Of course, people are thinking about. Quicksilver coming over from from the Fox properties like of mm -hmm. course like that's not that's not the fandom like inventing stuff that is clearly what the intention was and then they just kind of said ha ha fooled you he was nobody right and then there's like there's some fan theories like well maybe he was the witness in in Wu's witness protection program because they dropped that plot and then we can tie up these two loose ends together that in fact he is from the other universe and he was put in the witness protection program and his his fake name is Ralph Boner. And I was like, that's a really great idea. 
I don't think it is. I don't think I don't give them enough credit. There's a lot of uh, so so one of the things so a lot of, a couple of the things that were uh, hinted at and, and theorized by the fandom um, didn't come true. So yeah. Quicksilver, as you just said, was just a guy named uh, Ralph Bonner. Boner. It looked like Bonner, or is it Boner? They called him Boner. Um, I th- I oh, think okay. it's a reference to Growing Pains. Um, Sh- okay, that makes you know, sense. Even though his name was Stabone in, in Ro- Growing Pains. But nonetheless, there was a boner character, but whatever. Right. Um, Monica Rambeau's uh, friend, the astrophysicist, everybody thought it was going to be Reed, Richard- Reed Richards. Right. Uh, Mr. Fantastic. Uh, turns out, no. Right. Um, everybody thought Mephisto the- was going to show up. He didn't. Mephisto was going to show up. Mephisto didn't show up at all, even though they were kind of hinting at it with the fly, which was kind of a cicada, blah, 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 yeah. blah. That went nowhere. Um, th- there was a lot of talk about the devil, so I understand why people thought Mephisto. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, the actress for Wanda said there was going to be a Luke Skywalker-type cameo. I don't know if that was supposed to be Quicksilver, but we didn't really get that. I was expecting Magneto, mm-hmm. um, Ian McKellen, or Professor X, Patrick Stewart. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it would be Quicksilver. I mean, I know that Paul Bettany said that in, in an interview that he he was going to be working with a person that he's admired his entire life. Uh, and in the end, it turned out to be himself, which is pretty yeah. funny. Like, you know, that's, yeah. you know, that's funny. <laughs> Paul Bettany is apparently a big jokester on sets. Uh, I saw some interview, saw an interview with Chris Evans where they said uh, during, um, I think it was before Civil War, and they said, who's the funniest cast like who's the funniest cast member and he's like that's really tough because um he said the guy that plays falcon is constantly making jokes and he's like he's hilarious and he says paul bettany's hilarious and he says paul rudd's hilarious so so it's a hierarchy of like who's fucking hilarious yeah with paul rudd going down paul Paul rudd is third but paul rudd is fucking hilarious so like i've seen in so many interviews where i'm like he's I think he's he's so dry. I think he's great. But I have seen Paul Rudd in lots of interviews. He's also very, very funny and charming. But uh, sometimes I forget because he's Paul, uh, Paul Bettany has done so many serious roles, like mm-hmm. like Legion or something, that I forget that he was in Knight's Tale and doing a whole bunch of comic roles. Um, you know, so my, my wife's like, how do you not remember Knight's Tale? That was such a huge movie. I was like, I guess we, we ran in different circles, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> she she loved Knight's Tale. So. And to touch on the other thing that you said, Preston, um, Monica Rambeau, that that turned out to be a big nothing. Yeah, no, it was horrible, horribly rushed. Um, I thought she was I thought her her story started out strong because watching the 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 re blip having everybody return is interesting and i didn't mm-hmm. i didn't mind any of that backstory with her mother and and the, and the pain she's going through and stuff like that and and readjusting to life i thought that was all very interesting because i think that whole event is interesting um but then she just becomes she becomes i don't know the most boring milk toast like kind of kind of person who you're not even sure what she's trying to achieve and then she gets powers from fucking nothing, like going through the barrier three times. Didn't everybody go through the fucking barrier? And then, and then she's just gonna, you know, they just wanted to introduce her for for Captain Marvel too, um, and have her have power. Or to make her the next Nick Fury, because I'm gonna go ahead and assume that Samuel L. Jackson is, um, even though Disney can afford it, uh, maybe his uh, price tag's in a little too high, and they need the Samuel L. Jackson, the Nick Fury, for the next generation of Marvel films. Because as of right now, S.W.O.R.D. doesn't have a, a director. Hayward uh, was most likely arrested by the FBI, so S.W.O.R.D. needs right. a new director, and I guess it's Monica. But I don't understand the point in giving her powers if we never see that that again. I mean, she's... she's uh... She's um, she's a Ms. Marvel, or I think she's also called Photon in the in the um, in the comic book. I I quite frankly I like characters who uh, I like it when characters are awesome. They don't need powers. Like Jimmy Woo himself is just awesome yeah, the way no, he is. Jimmy Woo, Please don't give him anything. Jimmy Woo and Darcy were fantastic. Like they were great characters, um, and they didn't have any powers, and that was great. You know, uh, we didn't need we didn't need Monica Rambo to be there. She was she was crammed in there because they wanted to introduce a character that was going to be in Captain Marvel too, um, and right. she's she's on that. I know that she's slated to be in that movie. So, but well, 
the entire the entire show itself seems to be like the starting point of what's to come for um phase four of the marvel cinematic yeah. universe because it sets a lot of things up mm -hmm. you know it sets up uh as wanda being the scarlet witch which they kind of um retconned how she got her powers they added like a little caveat in there uh -huh. that she always kind of had witchy powers but the stone just made it more I don't know. The stone just reawakened them and, and amplified right. them. Right, and this so. this is kind of some new plot. This it's also some retconned plots in the comic book because originally Wanda was just a mutant, and then later they're they're making in the comic book she's apparently uh, the of a line of Scarlet Witches and stuff like that. So like, mm -hmm. oh okay, but um, so you know they're. They seem to be dipping into the new plot of Scarlet Witch when she was originally just a mutant, you know, who had powers. I, I my my wife was asking about how, the powers. She's like, but she has like magic powers. But I was like, well, kind of. The Marvel Universe kind of like there's there's cosmic powers which are kind of bleed into magic powers. There's not necessarily a differentiation, but cosmic power doesn't mean anything either. It's just spacefaring superheroes like the Silver Surfer, use cosmic power. Um, and then there's magic power, which would be like Doctor Strange, but it's not really any different. So, you know, so you just kind of have a situation like the Scarlet Witch. She is a mutant. But she has chaos magic, which is also creation magic. Right. I mean, in the comic book, she just has the ability to man manipulate reality, which... You know, it, and if it involves, if manipulation of reality is like involves cosmic energy and cosmic energy is magic, like it's all the fucking same thing, right? They're, they're just, they're just <laughs> calling it different names, right? Yeah, but like I said, the, the finale just really set thing a lot of things up going forward into Phase 4, uh, Multiverse of Madness, which she will be a part of with Doctor Strange. But I think you're right. I think the finale was a victim of everybody hyping up all these amazing theories that could have been possible that would have made the show yeah. insane just never came to fruition. Once again, no Reed Richards, no Mephisto, no um, uh, Fox's Marvel Cinematic Universe with the X-Men. Um... I guess towards the end we got the the, the secret credit thing, uh, the scrolls. We might get a scroll invasion. Yeah, well, that's kind of out... a series. Yeah, right. Turns out Nick Fury wants to meet with her once again. I think it's to make her like the director of Sword, which I think he has a hand in. Um, yeah, White though, Vision. Though I don't, he, I'm not really sure about the relationship between Sword and Shield, but okay, yeah. I kind of was waiting for something like Hammer to show up. Like Hammer, I think, was a thing, uh, which was uh, created by Justin Hammer with Norman Osborn, I think. Oh, right, right, right. Um, but uh, no, a White Vision is out there in the world somewhere. That, that yeah. I will say one of the highlights of the episode was the fight between Vision and White Vision, which wasn't really much of a fight. It was more like a, like oh, a, but it's, a conversation. But that's, the, that's the funny thing, right? Like, this point, we're so exhausted by just pointless CGI battles of, of people shooting lasers at each other that like that the vision showdown is so refreshing that it is, you know, you're just oh. like, Oh, that's, this is so much better. So much better. That's the word I would use refreshing. It was, and it was the, the uh, I believe it was the uh, ship of uh, uh, Theseus or Theseus. Yeah. Yeah. Ship of Theseus is an old, old philosophical argument about like what, what is the essence of something, you know, like if you replace, mm -hmm. if you replace all the pieces of something, you know, uh, you know, at what point does does Theseus's ship, if if each part of the ship has been replaced, does it start becoming a new ship? And that goes with our ourselves, our bodies. There's, I mean, all of the cells in our bodies, all the molecules get get recycled. Um, so at what point, you know, we we kind of exist as waves rather than constant objects. You know, so mm -hmm. it, it's kind of the idea with vision, right? That we're not sure what vision is. Um, he's a lot of things. Uh, built together with different programmings and, you know, um, Ultron and Jarvis and extra programming from Stark and Banner and the Mind Stone and, uh, you know, interference with from Wanda. You know, what is what is Vision? Who knows? So, um, but now it seems like the Vision is alive again, or at least they, in the comic book, there is a white Vision and he just had, didn't have really the emotions of, old vision but he had all the memories but he's still vision kind of in there somewhere and he's out there right now um we don't know where we don't know where he went 
Um, but I, f I feel like it's kind of weird. I would have liked the vision of stay dead, but bringing him back and, and like making him something different almost seems like what they're kind of doing with Loki. Mm. Like Loki, the Loki that's alive now and out there somewhere that we're going to get the series of, right. he's not the Loki that we remember from Thor Ragnarok that went through that growth. He's the Loki from, from post event. It's like second, the second one. Gamora or, um, you know, in, in Rick and Morty, the uh, his, his parents and sister are actually not his parents and sister because he he fucked mm -hmm. that universe up and like they went to a different the Cronenberg yeah they w he w they went into a new universe occasionally they reference it he's like whatever you're not even my sister you know like my real sister mm -hmm. is in this other <laughs> other universe but um yeah so uh, it it does seem like a bit of a cop out because you 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 invest you you're with this character and and his ups and downs and then all of a sudden. You, they just give you a new one, and you're like, I'm supposed to care about this this new one from a different alternate reality? No, fuck that. <laughs> you know, like that's. It, it's almost as though they realize that these toys sell, so they don't want to like shelve these toys just yet. Yeah. You know, they want to keep them around just in case. Um, the car the villain of Agatha. I thought there was more to this whole thing. Once again, Mephisto or something else going on. Uh, but Agatha, she's uh, forever stuck in this weird storyline. Um, Maybe that she was there's some fan, there's some fan theories that are like, but wait, if the hex is down, how does she maintain control? And you're like, I don't know, it just don't, it doesn't doesn't make sense. It's, <laughs> um, and some people, you know, but here's the thing: is is fan reaction to Catherine Hahn's portrayal of Agatha has been so positive that I can't see them not bringing her back. Like. Everyone loved her. Everyone loved her. She did a great job. Why wouldn't you bring her back? She's got to be brought back, right? I mean, but it's kind of grim, right? We, they, they established pretty well that everyone was in a hellish state of pain when they were under Wanda's spell, and she just went and put her under that. You put her in a freaking hell. Like, one of the women even said, then kill us. Like, oh, my God, like... Like, they would rather be dead than be in their state. <laughs> I'm sure Agatha will somehow figure out a way to, to free herself from it, or I'm sure at some point Wanda will need some uh, help from someone that has studied magic for a long time and go back to Agatha, because I think in the comics, Agatha becomes Wanda's, like, mentor yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. So. but it, it, it does seem like Wanda didn't get her comeuppance. Like, she fucking tortured and terrorized these people they're never going to be the same you know mm. they're never going to be the same like like for a month of their life their their bodies were taken control of and they were they were you know in a horrific state uh, of pain where they said they had nightmares about uh wanda's nightmares and then they're clearly very pissed when they all wake up and then she's just like bye except for monica who's like i would have done it too what what <laughs> did monica say that? yeah she's that like part. you know i would have done, done it too to have my mom back it's like look we've all you know I, I, not everybody's <laughs> lost somebody but you know i've lost people i would not torture a town and put them in a hellish state to bring back someone that i lost i'm sorry i'm not that selfish and evil like my god it depends where the town is, but anyway. <laughs> Dep uh, Maybe they're all dicks. The, well, the town is in New Jersey, your home state. <laughs> so, yeah. It's from yeah, it's in New Jersey. I don't feel that bad. <laughs> uh, but to bring it back to what I said earlier, the, my problem with Watchmen, it's not really a problem. Watchmen mm. was amazing all the way through. All the episodes of Watchmen were like hype after hype after hype. Yeah. And then the final episode was not bad. It just didn't live up to the hype right, as the previous right. episodes. Here... I feel as though there's a lot of scenes that are kind of missing. It felt a little rushed, just a tad. Like this could, the, like this could have easily been a one parter and then maybe a two parter for episode ten. Right. I mean, like, just just even thinking about the head of sword coming in really quickly to do what? I don't even know what they're trying, what he's trying to do, and then and then Darcy ramming that van, and then disappearing. You know, having one line in the episode, of course, like, man, that's rushed. Like, we had no, yeah, I don't even know, what th that entire battle scene, I don't even know what was going on. Like, why would Monica Rambo jump in front of some imaginary kids when she didn't know she had superpowers to stop some bullets? 
And then who cares if they stop the bullets because the kids are imaginary and die like in a few hours. So like, <laughs> what were the stakes? Oh, it's just so weird. So weird. <sighs> so um, I will say I did like the final battle between Agatha and Wanda. It does kind of wander off into weird territory. At one point, Wanda sneaks attacks Agatha mm. and takes Agatha back to that of uh, the burning of the the her execution at the hands of the yeah, witches back weird. in Salem. Yeah, because all of, that all was of a sudden weird. They, she, she like Age of Ultron her right because she used her right. power. And then all of a sudden, like, Agatha was back in control within within the nightmare. It was weird, right? Yeah. I, that was that seemed a little unnecessary. And then and then Wanda uses the rune thing, which I thought was super cool. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it, the episode felt a little weird. It wasn't bad. I just wasn't the, the biggest fan of it. Um, but the episode ends with Wanda. She's living off in the wilderness, and she has made... She has split herself off a little bit kind of like dr strange does and she's reading the what is that the necronomicon of the marvel universe the, something the, like that the, car, car, i was like the car hold no the um yeah it's uh it's the it's it's from the dark hole dark hole dimension or something dark hole, like that yeah. supposedly it appeared the book appeared in uh, agents of shield and everybody's like oh no don't touch it and i'm like i don't fucking care about agents of shield who fucking cares about Agents of Shield? But um, no, cool, interesting. Now Wanda is probably the most powerful person in on the planet, yeah. uh, right next to Doctor Strange. She's actually even more powerful than Doctor Strange. Yeah, that's what they said, right? Because they they mentioned the Sorcerer so, Supreme. Mm-hmm. So uh, here's where I get annoyed. Okay. Any problem. Like, let's say there's another movie. Like, let's say Spider-Man is fighting the Green Goblin. If I don't see Wanda come in and knock out the Green Goblin in two seconds, I'm going to be annoyed. Because if she's the most powerful person on the planet, can't she kind of just fix every single problem that has ever happened ever or ever will happen? <sighs> see, see, this is the the <laughs> this is the problem when you ha with the Marvel Universe in general. Like, why wouldn't these incredibly powerful ca like characters who exist like come in, right? Like there's this huge mm. problem here in New Jersey. They're they're just you know a couple hours from New York City. Where was Doctor Strange? You know where was Doctor Strange? Why wouldn't he show up? Because you know this is gonna be this is a Marvel. This is these are these are the Marvel movies. You know for a fact it's gonna be another bad guy and he's gonna shoot up some fucking blue laser in the middle of New York City. If Wanda doesn't show up and put that shit down with her amazing cosmic powers, yeah, I'm gonna be a little annoyed. Like what the fuck? Right. You know it's. You, you, the problem when you get, you know, um, omnipotent people is you start having that philosophical question about, like, why why does God let, you know, bad things happen to good people? Like, right? It's the same kind of thing. Like, if you've got these omnipotent superheroes, why why are they letting bad things happen? Like, why shouldn't they, shouldn't the Avengers arrive immediately to stop this? This is a, a pretty big fucking deal when... When ex Avengers have taken over an entire town and are torturing people, you think the Avengers would show up, but no, yeah, no. Yeah. To be fair, I, I do like how they during Civil War and a lot of the movies around Civil War, whenever there was a major issue, um, well, wh where's Thor? Why doesn't Thor come yeah. in? Well, he doesn't live in Earth. Earthlings solve their own problems. You could argue that. That'd be a nice argument. What about Hulk? Well, Hulk was. Captured by some cosmic entity and forced to fight yeah. in a gladiatorial arena. Well, they 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 okay. in, in the last Spider-Man movie they lampshade this. He's like he's like you know, um, fake Nick Fury shows up and 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 he, they're like, why you know we need you Spider-Man to do this work. And he's like, what what about all the Avengers? And the, and he kind of like goes down the list, but he doesn't really go down the list. You know, they're like, why don't mm -hmm. why don't you bring in Thor? You know, what, he's off world. Why don't you bring in uh, Captain Marvel, and they're like, "Don't, don't bring her name up." And you're like, "Well, wait, you just—that's that, not really an answer. Like, it was funny, but like, you can't, you can't." <laughs> Bitch, you've been to space. I mean, well, still, I, it's a case like seventeen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what about Hawkeye? I mean, you know, <laughs> he's retired. You need a like a less cab character. Uh, is he retired? Uh, he's retired. What about Ant Man? Ant Man ain't doing nothing. He's still under. I don't know if um, Hawkeye and Ant Man are still under house arrest, but. <laughs> 
Hawkeye. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was. What about Falcon? Well, I mean, it's been five years, so they probably are just like, fuck it. Like, you (laughs) you help save the world. It's fine. I don't see how they could ever fucking do uh, X-Men Mutants with with such an established world already. Because if if you if if Reed Richards or Magneto or Professor X came out of the blue, you would have to be asking questions like, where were you guys during all this like chaos? Right. I mean, it's why that's why the multiverse system like works so well, but. You know. Right, and they had a chance with the whole fucking Quicksilver kid coming in, but then they fucked that up for yeah, some reason. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is they had a chance to wrap it up. When when these, when these this fan theory came out that he's really, like, Wu's um, witness, like, if he, he probably isn't, but it just makes me angry because, like, the entire premise of the show, like, is kind of based on this horrible, like, series of events that doesn't really make much sense, right? Like... So, so after, after working on vision for five years and, and, not, and getting nowhere, um, uh, Wanda shows up at sword and wants his body. Okay, fine. Then she leaves and she, and vision for some reason has a will with her, even though they were just establishing that their relationship was working in infinity war so i don't know why he wouldn't bother this like house but one not to grow old in but fine Mm -hmm. she she goes there creates the hex great then Wu has to bring the fbi in um because his his witness is missing which we never hear from again and then for some reason the fbi need a drone so they contact sword who agrees to send a drone with Rambo. Um, and coincidentally, it, it, it ends up being where Wanda and, you know, is who's created the vision who, whose magical energy helps reanimate white vision who they've been trying to reanimate for five years and can't like, it's so many weird coincidences <laughs> and conveniences that, that, that it, it, it's mind bending when you actually think about, the, the series of events because he's just like wait he coincidentally sent rambo to the based on the fbi's missing persons it was supposed to be a nothing to and she just happened to stumble upon the most important finding that sword's actually been like working on for all of this time it's just uh you know it's just uh it's mind bending it's mind bending how, how like <laughs> c- contrived the whole thing is but ugh. but the the fan theory would make much better sense that you know that there, that this that this uh, missing persons was much more important and that's why they wanted an agent an agent um, an agency like Sword bringing the the drone in because why can't the FBI get a drone from fucking anybody you know why <laughs> why can't they go to the Apple Store and get a drone I didn't know about that theory that uh, Wu's um... Uh, witness was uh, Pietro from the other dimension. Yeah, I didn't. I, that's a cool theory. How the fuck are the fans able to come up with better theories? And what, what kind of annoys me is I, I don't want to overspeak here because I actually did like the show and I love what Kevin Feige is doing with yeah, Marvel. No. I think I think Disney has taken him and shifting him to Star Wars, which is a conversation I'm going to have with you yeah, in a minute. Yeah. Um, but no, but Kevin Feige has done a great job of Marvel so far. You said something last week with me that i kept thinking about and i thought this guy's awesome um i love the interconnecting threads the thing you said about how jimmy Wu and ant-man of the wasp Mm -hmm. he uh sees the card trick that ant-man does and then in this he does it like it connects back together that's really cool i love the attention to detail the hex how on wanda's uh sheets there it's all hex shaped like right really cool stuff like that like they know what they're doing and they there's such love and attention to detail here but um I don't know. I, I'm kind of let down that a lot of these fan theories that were overhyped didn't come to fruition. And maybe that's my problem. Maybe that's why I'm not completely satisfied with what's going down. But uh, it did still feel a little yeah. rushed. Like some stuff doesn't really make too much sense either in that if like they do this double fake out where you think Wanda's controlling everything and then it's Agatha who's, who's the, the villain. But then you find out, no, actually Wanda was controlling everything. Thank God. And, right. But but it kind of is really weird because, I, you know, we talked last time about all the little hidden clues that something was was inducing Wanda to produce children. And mm-hmm. like like um, 
uh, the people coming over and talking to Wanda and being like, why don't you have kids? And then um, Agatha bringing over the pineapple and then her eating the pineapple. And then, you know, having that dog that causes the kids to want to grow up. And then, you know, you're like, oh, why, why is Agatha trying to create these kids? Well, it turns out Agatha wasn't. Wanda was doing it to herself. She wanted to create her own kids. Like it was Wanda the whole time. Subconsciously. Subconsciously, yeah. right. No, the whole theory with the kids was that um, she put, she makes them into creation, but they, they're not really real. So Mephisto is willing to make a deal that he will allow the kids to stay in reality without the hex. There's a, there's a theory that the, the souls were pulled from somewhere because she thanked them for choosing her, you know, to be their mom right. and stuff like that. But like all these little scenes now of like, of Agatha putting the lavender over the kids and then the kids growing up, like that's no longer Agatha. That was actually Wanda the whole time. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like just crazy stuff. Like, um, that doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't fully make sense uh, you know like in my head because agatha's plot in the end is just observing wanda long enough to figure out how she's doing these tricks and then to try to steal her power so the whole like producing children and, and like pushing her in that direction was not her goal actually at all um so weird and then where did her basement come from like how did her basement go into that <laughs> other realm because that's ralph boner's basement like, why does Ralph Boner's basement have, like, does she have teleporting powers? Can she create a witch's lair in a basement really quickly? I don't know. It's Well, Agatha has, has, has shown that she has the ability that Vision has where she can dispels, dispel people's, like, mind control that, they, like, Wanda has on them. So maybe she did that with Ralph right. and, you know, kept But them. now I'm wondering, um, why did Agatha kill the dog? Like, what was the point of Agatha killing the dog? For that awesome, like, little Yeah, montage for that little that montage that like... where she de says she's killed the dog. Does she kill the dog specifically because she wants to know if if she has the ability to bring people back from the dead? Because she questions that. Was it solely that? That she wanted to know if she could bring back the dog? Um, I guess. I guess she's trying to figure out if she's the Scarlet Witch. But I will say this, though. Um, the second, the, the, the penultimate, the that penultimate episode, the second to last one, the one from last week, um, where it gives us uh, Wanda's flashback, where it kind of retcons how she got her powers, that she was kind of witchy the entire time. Mm. Um, that was a crazy-ass episode. Um, it, it wasn't my favorite. Still good. Um, that was a crazy-ass episode to be on a Disney Plus show. Oh, yeah. Um, those women get their essence sucked out, and they're kind of skeletal. And then as Wanda and her little brother are watching Parent, TV... Their parents are just obliterated by a missile, yeah. Right. No, I mean, for adults, like... Okay, I mean, I would say that the A-plus stuff that I'm going to give to the show is is the backstory and, and characterization that they gave to Wanda and Vision uh, were incredible were incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. their characters are very rushed in the movies. Um, we get just little snippets, but this, I mean, fr like the whole get go, you understand why Wanda would fall in love with vision. You vision is so charming and, um, and, you know, poetic and, and everything. And it's there for Wanda at this certain time in her life. And you, you get all of it, like all of their scenes together are wonderful. That was a plus stuff when it came to mm -hmm. like the characterization. I, they've, they haven't given anybody that kind of characterization yet. Right. Have they, I mean, maybe I, mm. I mean, maybe I can, maybe to, to Spider-Man or Iron Man, like somebody that's gotten a lot of screen time, maybe Captain America. No, no, no. Those, those characters have always been consistently like, maybe, maybe Iron Man was, Tony Stark was giving a bit more character development, kind of, but eh, here and there. It's a, I mean, the thing with Tony is, Tony Stark is they give him a lot of time, but at the same time, it's a little inconsistent. Like he's got PTSD in a movie and then kind of doesn't and. You know, then he then he's obsessed with like, then he's obsessed with Spider with Peter Parker and like, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, I'd say one character that's kind of given a lot of, uh, usually the villains like Loki. Yeah, and Thanos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Than yeah, you're right. Thanos was given a lot was given given a lot of great time and and characterization. Um, and so I mean, yeah, so but. To be given, to, to it's nice to have the breathing room, to be given the time to get to know Vision and, and, and Wanda. They did a great job on it. 
Um, mm. And 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 so in the end, I'd say no. It was it was a great series in the end. Just I mean, just for that. Uh, so I mean, we're nitpicking here and there about like fundamental plot kind of stuff, but like, um, but there were some great moments. There were some great laughs. Darcy and Wu were fantastically funny characters. Who who? Oh yeah. Um, uh, Peter, like other Quicksilver, was fucking hilarious. Like, they're 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 that was a dick move. Re- on yeah, part. it was a dick move. But like, he, it was great up until that point. Um, you know, uh, the show, the recreations of the shows were great. I just think that they, I think the stuff they fucked up on was was the portrayal of Sword and Monica Rambo was really yeah. stupid. And and they needed they they were trying to cram a uh, square peg into a round hole like she had no place in the show and they shouldn't have had her should have been just jimmy woo and darcy honestly yeah yeah you know 100 percent um and to and to wrap up our wandavision discussion um how did you feel about that line that vision gives wanda what is love if not grief persevering um that's funny i had a discussion with my wife about that um because mm. it's look it, it's a beautiful line it's very poetic uh um, and it's what, it's what Wanda needs to hear at the time. Does it make sense? No. Cause, cause what, what are you supposed to say? Like when you stop grieving, then, then love has failed. Like, no, like that, because the inverse is not true. Right? <laughs> like, are you supposed to grieve forever? Like, you know, I love, I love when you say stuff like that, because there's always that one dude in the comment section who has to try and correct you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, like I grieve forever. Like, no, like, first of all, like, you know, I've lost people in my life. Like, you know, you grieve really hard for a certain amount of time. And then, you know, you move on and you persevere. And it doesn't mean that like, um, like, my level of grief is not necessarily proportional to like my love, right? Like just cause I've stopped mm. grieving and I'm feeling that, that, that horrible pain, um, doesn't mean that like I've stopped loving a person. Love hasn't died because my, my, my grief, you know, uh, <laughs> stopped. Um, not to mention so much of, so much of grief is, is, really about yourself and, and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's hard to really quantify. Um, cause when, when you feel grief, it's not just about missing another person. It's about yourself a lot. And so it's like, is love persevering? Is it love of yourself? I don't know. Maybe. 